Hey everyone, welcome to another one of my videos. And in this video, we're going to be talking about something that happens very rarely. And that's an NBA rookie sleeper. Yeah, I got an alert for you. So uh, let's get right into it. Now before I go into who the player actually is, I want to revert back to recent years to show you how rare this actually is on what I'm going to predict today, um, what's going to happen. So, um, let's see. Very rarely do rookies provide significant fantasy value. And when they do provide value, it's usually like late round to mid round. And here are a list of players in the last, over the last decade, more or less, who provided mid round fantasy value. Last year it was Jean Morant and Zion. Now Zion didn't play that many games. John Morant was clearly the, the best rookie last season. In 2018, we have Aiton, Doncic, and Trey Young, and, and you know, they're going into their third uh, year and look at where they're being drafted now. First, second, third rounds, all awesome players. And they killed it right from the get-go, right in their rookie seasons. Let's see, 2017, we had Donovan Mitchell. Who I, I'm, I was surprised to learn this, but he went 24-4 in a steal and a half a game in his rookie season. And he pretty much does that now in, in, in his uh, fourth season. He just averages like 25 points and five and five, five rebounds, five assists, and still a steal and a half. So he's been killing it right from the get-go. He was a steal in, in the 2017 draft, and I think he was taken like 10th overall. In 2016, we have Ben Simmons, who I don't think anyone was surprised at the numbers he put up. He was first overall. In 2015, another first overall draft pick, uh, draft pick was Carl Anthony Towns, who killed it. A surprise in the 2015 draft is um, Jaleel Okafor. You guys remember him? He doesn't play now, but his rookie season, he was killing it. And I had him as a rookie that year, so I was, I was happy that year. And to round out the 2015 class, uh, Porzingis had a very solid year with the mainly the two blocks really catapulted his value in his rookie season. 2014, Andrew Wiggins had a solid, uh, solid rookie season. Joel Embiid crushed it his rookie season, 28 and two and a half blocks. His blocks have gone down ever since, but that's typically how it goes. And Julius Randle, Randall had a very good rookie season. Uh, now, when I say rookie season for Embiid and Randall, Embiid didn't play till his third year, but he didn't play at all until his third year. And Julius Randall, in his rookie season, tore his ACL 13 minutes into his very first NBA game. So, technically, it was Randall's second year that he put up 11-10, but still, I put him on the list because he's technically still, even though he's not technically a rookie, I feel like he deserves to have that that praise because in his first year, he just he had a good good year. And then in 2013, Victor Oladipo put up solid numbers. Uh, Dame Lillard in 2012 at 19, six assists and three rebounds was an awesome rookie season. And same with Kyrie Irving, who put up 18, five and four. And it kind of is a perfect segue into what I'm getting into because the player I believe in this year I believe he's going to put up numbers similar to Dame Lillard or Kyrie Irving. And so who is that player? It has to be Anthony Davis, right? He was the number one draft pick. Nope, not Anthony Davis. And he most certainly has the potential, especially in a fast-paced team. Last year, Minnesota ranked first in team possessions per game. But, oh, and he's going to be starting, right? So, um... He definitely has a lot going for him, but at best, he's going to be the third option on his team next to Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell. And if he struggles early, he has a backup who produced very well last year when they traded for him in Malik Beasley, who's sitting right behind him, who's also going to get a lot of minutes. Also, for Anthony Edwards, I feel like he's more like a Victor Oladipo, like Coming out of college, they both are very strong defensively and don't have a well-polished offensive game. So if we go back to uh, the rookies in your past, in 2013, Oladipo went 14-4-4 four four with one and a half steals. I would be surprised if Anthony Edwards does a bit better and goes 15-5-5 five five with one and a half steals, which is awesome. 
definitely deserves to be talked about. But I actually think there's going to be uh, a better rookie than Edwards this year. So I know what you're thinking, guys. So it has to be James Wiseman, right? Nope. Not James Wiseman. Now, he is going to start, but it's not really guaranteed like Edwards is guaranteed. Because if he begins to struggle, they, they have Looney and Chris who can take his minutes away from him. So his minutes may be inconsistent at times this year. And he has he was drafted number two because he has a lot of potential. He's, he's far from being a finished product. And typically, it's very rare for big men to produce offensively in their rookie season. Let's see. So even if Wiseman doesn't struggle, his minutes still may be limited due to Golden State's fast-paced style. They're going to be a top-five team in, in pace this year. And I, I don't know if he's going to be able to keep up. I believe he didn't play that many games in college this past year. So it may also take him some time to get in shape. It may take time to get that conditional condition level up to where it needs to be for the NBA. And even if that doesn't affect him, his fantasy value is limited simply because he's going to be the last option on his team in the starting five. Like you have Curry's number one option. You have Oubre. You have um, blanking on somebody. Oh, and, and you have Wiggins. Those three are going to be the top three, but uh, Draymond Green is probably going to be the guy who's running the offense as well. So if Wiseman gets a significant amount of points, it's probably going to be off lobs from Draymond or, one, or, or even Steph, somewhere along those lines. So I, I do not think Wiseman's going to have a breakout fantasy caliber type of year, but... I wouldn't be surprised if he puts up a nice 12-10 double-double with a block. Maybe he'll do better. I don't I don't think he will, though. All right, so I know what you guys are thinking. So it definitely has to be the number three pick, LaMelo Ball, right? You'd be wrong again. I know there's, like, a lot of hype on LaMelo Ball. I'm not sold on him personally. And Ball won't even begin the season starting. He will be... be be playing behind Graham and Rozier to start the season. He'll probably get good minutes, but he won't be starting, so it will affect his fantasy value. And even when he is on the floor, he's never going to be the true number one option, as they still have Gordon Hayward, and he and the Mellow Ball will likely still be playing with either Graham or Rozier on the floor, which will take away from his touches. Later in the year, Ball might shine, especially if Charlotte struggles and they choose to develop their young uh, young players. But overall, he, he won't contribute significant uh, fantasy value over the entire course of the season. He, If he does, it's going to be during playoff time. It won't be between January to March. And some, some people might be okay with that. Like, why not shine during playoff time, right, guys? But I will say, if Charlotte surprisingly begins to win and they're in the playoffs, his role may never change this year, and he may be on the bench, coming off the bench as, a, like, a six-man all year and only getting 26 to 20 minutes a game. So... I know what you guys are thinking. Who the hell am I? Who am I, who am I talking about? Who the hell am I talking about? It's number seven, the seventh pick in this year's draft, Killian Hayes. So I've been seeing reports stating that he beat out Derrick Rose for the starting um, role at point guard this year, which surprised me because Derrick Rose had a great year for the Pistons last year. He averaged eighteen and like five and a half assists. And he just played one of his best years since his um, all of his injuries back when he was the MVP years and years ago. So this, along with other young players the Pistons are focused on developing, are clearly looking to rebuild build as the stars they gambled on. Talking about Rose and Blake Griffin, they just never panned out the way Detroit had hoped. They 
hope that those two players were going to carry this team to a top five or six um, seed in the playoffs and hopefully trying to get far in the playoffs. But it just didn't pan out for them. Now, the reason why I believe Hayes is going to provide significant fantasy value this year is because he, he's an international player. And international players fair, usually fare well coming right into the NBA. And so he played in Germany for the BBL and also played for Chole since he was 16 years old. So he was playing against professional competition since he was 16. And the year that was, was 2016. So that's almost five years he's been playing. Um, well, let's just say four years. It's been four years that he's been a professional player. Granted, not in the NBA, not NBA level type of competition, but still if you're 16, 17, 18 years old playing against professional men, there's something to be said about that. So he's probably going to be better prepared than most rookies coming into the NBA. And struggles or not, it appears that Detroit is ready to, for a fresh start by handing over the keys to the 19-year-old from Germany, regardless if he struggles or not. They benched Ro uh, Derek Rose uh, for Hayes, and I think since they not only had Hayes, I forget who their second first-round pick was, but they have some young talent that I believe that they're going to look to develop win or lose this season and they want to see if they can somehow surprise uh well not surprise themselves but they it appears that they're going to try to develop their own superstar and like i said i think if it's going to be anyone it's going to be killian hayes he had a lot of executives talk about how surprised they were that he fell to seven and that he should have been a higher pick so I do think the sky's the limit for him as early as this year, if not this year, very early in his career. But I do believe if anyone in this draft is going to be a top 50 player or even better, it's going to be Killian Hayes. All right, guys, don't forget, make sure to like this video if you found it informative or if you liked it or if you disagree with me. And make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'm going to be releasing uh, fantasy basketball content all year round. All right, guys, that's it for me. Have a good one.